Hello and welcome to another MDAR video. We've noticed there's lots of training videos on the web which talk about what to do with Velvus when it's up and running and all the amazing stuff you can do with it, but there's nothing that really addresses the basics about how to wire it all together. So we're going to do that in this video. We're going to show you a couple of modules, a bit of wiring, a USB connection and the basics of Velbus Link. We're going to be using a GP4, which is a four button glass panel. We're going to be using a single channel relay module. So as you can see, it's all quite straightforward. You do need to allow it about 40 mil within the boxes to allow for the wiring. And this is a good 40 mil unit. This is a Legrand. It's a plasterboard box that we're showing here. And it's got plastic lugs at the back, which roll out and then tighten up to grip the plasterboard. Each one does require a blue mounting frame to be added to it before the glass panel can be clipped on. And the nice thing is there's two orientation options. So depending on where your lugs go, there's always two screws free for screwing on the mounting frame. Uh, the nice thing is you can rotate them around. There's a bit of free play. So as long as you've got a round hole, you're definitely going to get the glass panel fitted nicely on the wall. So cabling is the next thing. Uh, Velvus is a four wire system. It has a power pair and a data pair. All these cables here are four wire. They're just different gauges, different twists and different construction. But essentially they are all compatible with Velvus. If you look closely, you've got a data pair that's gently twisted and a power pair there. I'd probably go for positive red, negative black, uh, white low and green high. Again, another cable, a uh, different manufacturer, but as you can see, the same technical spec and then this these are knx versions of the same thing this one's got a, a shield around the data pair and a drain wire but hasn't the data pair isn't twisted this next one is exactly the same cable as the previous one except it's a ducting grade which means the outer jacket is a bit thicker so it's still got the data pairs but a thicker outer jacket and if you're looking for something even more meaty there's a steel wired armored version which has got the uh, steel wire and it's the same cable inside. So it's got the same jacket and then the same green K and X sleeve and then the date pair. So that's it really. Uh, we've got to wire it up now. So what do we need? We need, I've got a demo rig here, which I use for testing bits of equipment. It's a four wire cable that I've already put on a PCB, but we're going to take this green connector, which comes with the glass panels and you see it's clearly labeled low high negative and positive. Now it does say 12 volts. Velvus is a 15 volt system. 12 volts is the absolute bare minimum that it'll accept. 18 volts is the maximum. So we take the four wire cable and we connect it up to the four way connector, which gets in the back of the glass panel. And if you're doing an installation, that would appear at your, the location of your first glass panel. The wire would traverse around your property to your second location. So an in and an out. And then again, connect those same four wires up to another connector. Just positive, positive, negative, negative, high to high, low to low. Nothing more complicated than that. So that's your second glass panel. Repeat that all the way around your property. And eventually you'll come back to the consumer unit, which in this case we've replicated with a bit of PCB. This is the interconnecting strip that I've cut down just to make it easier for testing bits of kit with. So we've got our four pins per module. That's just a, a, a USB PCB, it's for development use. There's a DIN rail version, which has got better opto isolators for longer cable lengths. So there's nothing to it. It really just starts at one end, it's a bus, and it finishes off at the end. So uh, when you're commissioning, you just simply plug it in and push it onto the back box. Make sure it's uh, all four lugs have seated nicely. And what we'll do now is we'll hang the single channel relay on there. I got this only using a single channel relay because it was the thing on the front of the shelf when I turned around. So let's give a quick look at it. At the bottom is the four Velbus connections, the data and the power. And at the top, we've got our uh, connections to the outside world. So in this case, it's a single channel changeover relay. So there's your four rising cages. I'd strongly advise unwinding those so there's plenty of space there. And then just slide the pins of the PCB up into it. And then do them up. 
If only I could work at this speed all the time, I'd make a fortune. There you go. That's all four in. Now, quick little tip for you. If you want to know whether they're all se secured nicely, just gently push down on the pins. If they move, they're the wrong side of the cages. I have been caught out by that a couple of times. So that's it. You've been around the house, you've plugged your glass panels in and you've commissioned your consumer unit with all your various devices. Now we need to power it up. Now, on this occasion, because it's only the two units and they're going to be pulling about 100, less than 100 milliamps, I've got a 12 volt plug top, one amp power supply. And I conveniently got a, a DC connector soldered onto the PCB already. There we go, bit of power. And after a couple of seconds, the glass panel should start clicking. So onto the software. We've connected that USB and we've loaded Velbus Link. We've clicked on new project, we've set a location and we're gonna choose the USB connection that comes up by default. Click on next and we're gonna scan for new modules. And I don't normally, but on this occasion, we'll assign addresses automatically because it really doesn't matter. So it's going to scan through and it's going to find the two modules that we've connected up already. There you go. And I'll just let it zip through to the end there. There we go. Now it's just uh, double checking the addresses are correct. It's going to assign something. You'll see the FF change to 01. There it goes. So essentially, that's all configured. We just need to tell it what to do. So before we go any further, we're going to read the settings from the modules because you might be going to an existing installation. So always read the settings. It's good practice. Someone might have changed something. An alarm time might have changed. Some states might have changed. And it's always nice to capture those before you start doing anything with them. So let's open up the glass panel, the GP4. And we can see we've got the four real world buttons indicated there. And if we open up the relay, we've got the single channel relay and four virtual relays. If this was a four channel relay, you'd have four real world and one virtual. You can use the virtuals for interlocks and security things and uh, advanced logic, or gates and gates, that sort of thing. Now the glass panel it shows four physical buttons. If we look at the configure option, you'll see it's actually configurable for eight buttons. What we need to do is get that relay doing something. So grab and click and hold the button one and drop it over the top of relay one. Uh, when that opens up, click on toggle and that's it, done. You've set an action in Velbus. It's a toggle action, but we need to uh, synchronize it to the network. So if you click on synchronize and write changes, first time it takes a bit of time because it resets all the modules. And that's it, you're done. So let's have a look in the real world. There's the relay, taking the cover off so you can see the inside. There's a little indicator light and there's a black LED, black button for physically changing the state locally. So when you're testing, you can check it's all working. And actually check that the light you think is wired up to it actually is. And let's pick up the glass panel and button one, toggle off, toggle on, toggle off, toggle on, toggle off, toggle on. You generally get the idea. It's that simple. But let's do something else. Let's drag the button two over the top of relay one. And this time we're going to put a an interval timer in. So we're going to set it for five seconds with a pulse every second, just to show something different. So there's five seconds. Duration is one second. Off duration is one second. Quickly synchronize the changes. That's done. Pick up the glass panel. Press the button two and it toggles it off. Press button two again, and there you go. It's flashing to indicate the timer running. And you can hear the relay clicking there. That might, you might want to use it for an alarm or all sorts of things. But as each glass panel also control, contains a thermostat, Let's see what we can do with that. So click on the relay, click on clear and get rid of all of those actions. Now we're going to simply drag and drop the heater onto that relay one. And we're going to use the follow action, 0104. That's it, nothing to configure, job done. Click on synchronize, and that will send your new settings back to the Velbus system. Now if we right hand click and choose operate, we'll bring this little window up and we can now uh, scroll through all the heating modes. I'm going to highlight underneath that relay so that you can see when it's coming on and off. Now, 28.5 degrees in England in July is 
pretty good going. So we're going to need to do some manual overrides here. So if I set the target temperature to 30 degrees, and it's probably quicker to type it in. See straight away it comes up as the heat demanding for heat. Uh, the heaters pressed and the pumps pressed. And if you look right at the top, relay one is on. As soon as I change mode, it'll go off. And the target temperature is changed to 15. Day 20. Comfort 22. These are all programmable and adjustable. So let's just adjust that back to 30 just to show it's working again. There you go. Heat demand, relay on. Change the mode and it goes off again. Now, the thermostats aren't just heaters. They are also for uh, cooling. So if we were to do something with the cooling output, we could change the thermostat to cooling mode. And you see the target temperature is still 36. And the current temperature is 28.5. If we change the mode until it goes to something below 28 degrees, you'll see the cooler comes on, as does the boost. And that means that our target temperature is more than five degrees away from the current temperature. Again, that's fully adjustable within the configuration. It's to add a secondary layer of heating or cooling or airflow. And as we change around the modes, you can see it going on and off as the target temperatures change. Good practice, we'll put it back to heating, just so we don't confuse everybody. Now, that was a demo rig using two modules, but what happens if we wanted to connect up to a much bigger rig? So, let's take the power away from our little demo units, and we'll just connect the two together. So I've got my desktop model there, with all those Velbus modules on, and I've used the same USB connection. So we'll click on Scan, it'll go through and query all 255 addresses again, and anything that's got a valid module will pop up in the tree there. So as you can see, there's plenty going on. We've scanned and we've discovered the modules, but we haven't loaded their configuration. So we'll just click on Synchronize and click on Read. And that'll quickly, I've speeded this up a bit. That will go through and read all of the settings in those modules. You can see the names are changing as they're read off of the modules. Now, if we open up the OLED panel, you see it's actually got a load of base addresses and it's got 32 active buttons. And the ones with uh, chain, chain links on, you can see have got conf actions configured with them. But let's have a look at the thermostat. Now, the two of them on demo model are already configured, but what about that third one we were playing with a moment ago? So let's show that within the OLED, and we'll edit the name. We'll call this four button, and we'll click on control. So at least the OLED can do something with it other than just to show its temperatures. On this preset tab, we can see where we can adjust all those presets we saw earlier. Now, if we go to the glass panel, we can scroll through and look at all those 32 buttons that were exposed when we expanded the tree. But if we use the bottom button, we can now scroll down to a different group and we can show the thermostats. Office A, Office B, and there's that four button that we programmed up a moment ago. And now we're changing the mode within that other panel. That's comfort mode. And you can see the bottom right hand corner that the target temperature is shown. We can temporarily adjust that target temperature by clicking up and down. And so we can see what's happening. And if we, as soon as we change mode, it'll reset to the predetermined values. And that's it. That's how to program Velbus. So don't forget the uh, Velbus.eu website is a great resource for information on all of these products. My own website doesn't have all this information because there's no point replicating it. Please do go and visit velvis.eu to get all your information. There are starter packs there if you just want to dabble and have a play around. Or if you want something more bespoke, give me a shout and we can sort something out. There's a great service on here which lists and de describes all of the actions that are available within Velvus Link. We used a toggle earlier on, 0103, as a little diagram to show what it did. We also had a momentary and we also had an interval timer so if you do the control f or uh, use the search command and type in interval timer or that there you go come straight up 0415 
And if you scroll down in there, there's some other information about which panels that's re relevant to as well. 0101, there's an on command. So if you just want to simply set everything on rather than off, if you had a, well, have a button for on and a button for off. Now, if you're looking for a reseller, a distributor, and an installer, go to the point of sale page, search down for your country, and just type a town, London, it's as good as any. And you'll see there's myself at the top of the list and all the other installers and distributors that are listed in the UK. Uh, Ireland has its own dedicated uh, support guide, DTN Electrical. Let's have a look at Belgium while we're here. If Belgium hasn't got a good distribution network, then it's a pretty sorry state. So we're typing Ghent, and there you go. Lots of people that are listed as installers, a couple of distributors, and a couple of uh, people with showrooms. Now, there is, of course, the Velbus Forum, forum.velbus.eu. And this is mainly a user-based forum, but it is moderated by Velbus administrators, and they do chip in regularly and put people in the right direction and give precise answers. So that's it, velbus.eu. If you fancy buying some or having a look, then please visit that website. If you're interested in being a distributor or an installer, please give me a shout at mdar.co.uk.